Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the seventh video in the LibGD Xbox Studio Intel tutorial. So in this video, we're finally going to move on to attaching sprites to our Box City bodies. Um, so just a small review. The thing that we did last video was we did the animation and the resource manager, and uh, we cleaned up the play state. Here's the constructor. It's now very clean. I have two methods that I put everything into and it looks a lot neater. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I created a new oops, uh, package here called entities and I put in a new class here called B2D Sprite. So this is pretty much just an animation that's attached to a box 2D body. So um, private body body, that's going to be the first thing. Basically, um, I have, let's say, a body over here. This is some kind of Box2D body. And I also have a class over here. This is my Box2D sprite. Um, I'm going to have the body as a reference inside here. And I'm also going to have uh, the Box2D sprite as a reference inside the user data. So it's going to be like a sort of circular reference. So if I have the body, I can get the B2D sprite. If I have the B2D sprite, I can get back the body. So that's pretty much the way that I'm going to be doing this kind of stuff. So private body body. Uh, actually not private. Uh, this is supposed to be some sort of super class that we're going to extend off of. So I'm going to have different classes extending off of B2D sprite, like a player, and crystal. The uh, crystals that you're going to be collecting in the level. I'm not sure if I want to make this abstract in case I ever just need this, but uh, I'm going to leave it as a regular class for now. Uh, so all protected stuff here. Animation, animation. This is my own animation class here, so make sure you import the correct animation class. Uh, what else? Width and height for drawing, making sure that um, I draw in the center. And here is our constructor. Uh, it gives, uh, you need to give it a body. This dot body is body, because it's called B2D sprite, so you really need that body anyway. So create the new animation over here. Um, we have set animation. This pretty much is like a it just calls the set animation or set frames from the animation class. So this is like a sort of middleman type method. Um, so reg float delay, and I'm gonna do set animation new. Uh, no, what am I doing? Reg and then delay. That's pretty much it. Reg region whatever. Uh, next thing we want to do is update with the float DT, and all this is going to do is update the animation. Oh wow, what happened there? Uh, let me move this down. Okay, uh, what else do we need? Public void render. This is where we actually draw the sprite, and this is the important part. Now remember when I was telling you all about box 2D units? Um, let's say our game looked like this, and it was a uh, Let's see, here's our camera, 320 by 240. And if I had a sprite that was over here, um, with box 2D, remember you needed to scale down to box 2D units, which was uh, meters. And the way that I did it was I scaled everything down by 100. So box 2D, the box 2D world would be down here. This would be 3.2 and 2.4. And the corresponding box would be like right here. So when I create a game object, I'm actually creating a box 2D object that's a hundred times smaller down here. So whenever I want to render something from the box 2D uh, object, I need to rescale it back up to the game size. So in this case, I'm going to need to multiply by the pixels per meter. So um, sb.begin and sb.end 
And what we're going to do is we're going to draw animation.getFrame. Remember, this getFrame method just gets back the current texture region that the animation is in. Oops, I need the sprite badge in here. Um, so that's the first argument. The second one is the x position. And this is a body.getPosition.x times b2d bars.ppm. So here, this is where I do the multiplication to get it, get it back to the original game size. And then uh, just width divided by 2. And um, what else? The y position is pretty much the same exact thing. Get position dot y times b2d vars dot ppm minus height divided by 2. Um, so yeah. Oh, I forgot. I didn't set the width and height. Uh, I have them over here. They're going to be zero. So over here in set animation, this is going to be width is equal to one of the sprite frames that get region width, and height is going to be one of the sprite frames that get region height. So really, you want all your sprites to be the same size. Otherwise, it's just going to be weird. Your width and height is going to be messed up. So um, yeah, that's render, and that's how you scale back up to regular size since in play when we were creating all the box 2D bodies we've always been dividing by the scale and now when we want to draw we want to multiply by the scale alright uh, so box 2D sprite what else we need some getters body get body this just returns the body and again like I said the circular reference oh uh, I got rid of the drawing uh, you can get the body from the B2D sprite, and you can get the B2D sprite from the body, so... Uh, we could also get position. Uh, return body.getPosition. Uh, float get width, just in case we need these. Oops. And public float get height. Alright, so a bunch of getters there. Import vector 2. So there's our B2D sprite. Real simple stuff. And now, let's actually try to use this. We're going to create the player, or the bunny, whichever. And of course, this is going to be a subclass of Box2D sprite. There we go. So, um, pretty much, I have everything already I need in Box2D sprite. I only need to add a couple extra stuff in here. Um, private int num crystals private int total crystals. I'm not sure if this is the best place to put it, like in the player class, but uh, well, it kind of makes sense, so I'm gonna leave them in there. Here's the constructor. Again, all B2D sprites need the body, so I'm just gonna do super body here. And uh, now I'm going to read in the sprite sheet, and again, uh, from the last video, you know my resource manager over here is the content. All I have to do is load it up, or get it. I already loaded it up over here with res.loadTexture bunny. All I have to do is just grab it now. So I'm going to do texture text is equal to game.content. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I don't have game. Do I? Oh, right, I do have game. Oh, I'm confused myself there for a sec. I forgot this was a public static. My bad. So this works. Game.res um, dot get bunny and this is going to be our texture. Texture text is equal to game dot res dot get, get get texture I mean bunny. Hopefully that works and yeah it's all good. Texture text is equal to game dot res dot get texture. So this is our bunny texture which is just the bunny sprite sheet and what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it up into the uh, frames into texture region, an array of texture regions and this is just going to texture region actually has a uh, shortcut called split where you can split a texture if you want. So um, this is just gonna be I'm gonna give it the text and I'm going to split it up into 32 by 32 and I'm just going to give it back the first row so that's easy stuff right there and I'm gonna set the animation here set frames to the sprites and a delay of 
1 divided by 12 seems fine. Um, so yeah, width and height. Sprites 0, dot get region. I could actually just use set frames here, but uh, yeah, actually that makes a lot more sense. 1 divided by 12. Oh, what's going on here? I can't do that? Set frames? What did I do? Oh, I called it set animation, my bad. This is a uh, set animation. And that will do the, uh, that will call this, and it'll do the width and height for me. So, yeah. Alright, so there's our player class. Um, we also need a couple of getters and setters for the crystals. So, uh, getters and setters for num crystals. Void, collect crystal, oop, crystal. And this is just going to increase the number of crystals we have. This is get num crystals. Oops, oh my god, I can't type. Return num crystals. And one for the total crystals as well. Public void set total crystals. Oops, and I. Uh, total crystals is equal to I. And int get total crystals. Uh, I can't s type crystals, holy crap. Total return total crystals. There we go, just getters and setters for both of these. So that's it, that's that's the small player class, pretty much. There's really nothing there. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's go back into the play state. And now we're going to have private player player. Import that. Uh, first off, we no longer need this player body. So just get rid of that. Um, what else? We're gonna have some errors over here. Handle input over here. Player body doesn't exist. Uh, but the player, like I said, the box to the sprite player already has a reference to the body, which is in get body. So player dot get body dot apply to force to center. This is for the jumping. And we also have errors down here. Player body. Uh, we don't need any of this stuff. We'll just uh, create a new body here, over here. Body body is equal to world dot create body. Body dot create fixture. And body dot create fixture. And down here, create player. Uh, this is going to be player is equal to new player given the body. Good stuff. So, um, let's see. Oh, right, in the last video I made a mistake. But hopefully someone caught it. Um, in create layer, I have the short bits over here set because I give uh, each of the layers their own bits. Red for the red layer, green, green, and blue, blue. But I never actually used the short bits here. I always gave all the layers bit red. So over here, the category bits, this should be bits. Uh, yeah, so that should fix it. Let's see what this looks like. Uh oh, I'm having uh, errors. Whoa, stack overflow error. That is crazy. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, that was. This is bad. This is a circular. I'm calling it over and over and over again. That's why it's a stack overflow. I think it ran out of memory. Or it ran out of heap space or something. Um. So this is supposed to be animation dot set frames. That was bad. <laughs> uh, so in box two D sprite set animation, the first thing you want to do is animation dot set frames. Wow. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. Oh right, I forgot. Nothing's happening because I didn't actually draw the player. So go back into play state. Uh, update. Let's go ahead and update the player. And let's go ahead and draw the player. Player dot. What did I call it? Draw or render? Render. Right. Um. I also need to set the uh, camera. So the camera we're using again is the main camera. So this is just cam dot combined. There we go. So update player, draw player. Let's see what this looks like. And there it is. Now the player is a little bit kind of 
down there. So um, what we're gonna have to do is change the box to the uh, the player body uh, dimensions. Um, let's see here. In create player, we're going to change the fixture over here to uh, what's a good size? The the bunny sprite is around. 30 pixels I think. Let's go with 13 since it doesn't really cover the entire frame. Alright, that looks pretty good. So there's the bunny, it's a 13 by 13 box and it seems to be centered uh, well and the bunny is on top of the platforms so that looks pretty good. Um, that means but the foot sensor is kind of in, in the middle of the player so we can't jump here so we have to change the foot sensor move it down a little bit to negative 13 so our foot sensor is now down here under the bunny but uh, there's also going to be a problem here because um, the foot sensor is only down here if the bunny was all the way at the edge over here the foot sensor would not be on the block so if the bunny was on the edge you couldn't jump so let's make the foot sensor a little wider let's make it as wide as the bunny so 13 over here for the foot sensor and there we go our foot sensor is now all along the bottom of the bunny um yeah and one last thing for every level uh, the bunny needs to be moving constantly to the right so that's one of the body definition stuff in here so we're gonna do bdef.linear velocity and we're going to set it to 1, 0. So 1 is the x direction, goes to the right. 0, nothing in the y direction. Cool. So there we go. Um, nothing really happened there, so... Um, I guess that's going to be it for this video. We already have the player and the box to the body sprite stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. And... Um, Again, small review. Uh, what do we do? We did the box to the sprite. Um, so again, uh, when we create box to the bodies, they're always scaled to some uh, to the box to the units. So in my case, I scaled it down 100, and now it's 100 times smaller. Every everything in the box to the world is 100 times smaller than the game world. And if I want to draw stuff from the box to the body back to the game world, I need to multiply it by the scale that I used. So over here, when I render, I have to multiply by the pixels per meter scale. And uh, yeah, this is the B2D sprite class. We made the player class subclass here. That's pretty much it. Um, so, oh, I forgot one more thing. Create player. I said there was going to be a circular reference. The body is going to have a reference to the B2D sprite. I don't have that yet. Uh, so over here, we're going to do, uh, eh, we don't really need something for that. Uh, we're going to do body.setUserData, and I'm going, to, ooh, I didn't make the B2D sprite yet, so I'm going to do it over here, uh, body.setUserData to player. So now we finally have our uh, circular reference. If I have the body, I can get the B2D sprite by doing body.getUserData. And this is just going to return me the player class. And I also have the player.getBody. So, whichever. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.